Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Um, okay, so you wanna get on the road, you wanna get traveling. Right now you've got like a house and probably a lease and utilities and all of that jazz. And you mentioned wanting to go to Bali and Vilcabamba, Ecuador and Mount Shasta. Um, so first considerations would be um, you need to like unplug from where you are currently, which is usually like rent, utilities, um, you don't need to unplug your phone bill, although you might want to um, then like relationships, let people know that you're going to be going. Um, I've definitely like up and left on short notice before, and it's not the kindest thing to do to other people. You've been on the, the back end of me just being like, bye, see ya, <laughs> keep in contact. Um, so like making a list of the people that you do want to keep in contact with because leaving can be uh, isolating, you know, it's like you're... Uh, your psychological safety within yourself and your your needs needs to be high. Uh, just give me one second. Why do you need my one password? Because for the Khan Academy. Okay, let's set up Khan Academy a little bit later when I, you've got my full attention. It's not a well, no, because there's it's more it's multi step. They asked me to do a text confirmation. The text hasn't oh, come through yet. I'm just asking Khan you to. I might already have it. I do already. I know, and it still asked me to confirm. I'm asking you to, we can check in with it once I'm done with the phone call, okay? You have two other things that are really good le learning resources that you can totally do, and I'm really happy to get you set up on it today. I'm excited that you're excited about that, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, keep, who, who do you want to keep in contact with? Like, you're not going to keep in contact with everybody. Um, who do you need to let know? And then in turn, and, and so then that's like the unplugging, right? And then the next is where do you want to go? So the U.S. is you you need to know that you can as a Canadian you can only be there for up to six months six. at a time. And it's exactly. Yeah. Year, and it starts the day you enter, and it and they you know they count, and they don't like to see that you don't have an exit plan. You know. I know. Yep. They don't like to see that you're not. You know, if you're driving in, for example, with your vehicle, like. The, it's totally fine to do that. When I crossed the border into the U.S. last time with like my whole life packed up into the van, I got stopped and I had to spend about 45 minutes at 1 a.m. like sitting in customs waiting. But there was also like a clearly like Chilean uh, two guys who were like, I'm a web designer. That's my income. Um, also going through the same conversation. So they're going to want to know like proof of income or proof of ability to sustain yourself when you're going to be leaving. Um, what? I have a question. Yep. Can you say, because I have an online business, yep. can I sustain myself with my online business while in the U.S.? Do you know that? Okay. So yes, you can. Technically working any remote business while you're in a foreign country is legally working in that country and therefore either taxable by that country or illegal. But because it's such a small percentage of tourism, they don't really care. If you are crossing the border, um, I always say best to be honest, but also like best to be as simple as possible. So if you were planning a like let's say a three month trip to Shasta and then you were planning on coming back to Canada to drop off your vehicle and, and do something else. I would not, it, unless they ask you about how you're going to sustain yourself, I wouldn't, I would never bring it up. I would never say, you know, I'm doing this and I'm going to be working there hosting events while you're there. Mm -mm. Like no, right. no, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Doing personal consulting. Uh, you know, you can do those things, but don't, don't do it. And the U S is like, you know, U.S. Canada is pretty friendly. Mexico to the U.S. is clearly not friendly. Bali is a place where, like, you really need to work out, like, watch out for that. Like, doing online business stuff is okay and common, but I definitely heard of several friends who got exported, like, immigration shows up at their door knocking, being like, hey, we heard you've been hosting workshops. You're not allowed to do that. Pack up your bags. Right. You know, you you got to buy your flight at the airport or at the immigration kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Bali was like intimidating around that. Um, okay. The US, there's so many people, you just sort of disappear into it. But even if you are gonna host events, like host them under a pseudonym, get somebody else to set them up for you, like be, an, be a featured guest or apply for a business yeah. visa, which is also a possibility. But if you're just doing coaching services, just like don't mention it. And any events I'd be hosting would be online. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't intend to host public events unless an opportunity comes up in which it would be under somebody else, right? Yeah, somebody else organizing in that. So, um, yeah, I think that's all good. Okay. Um,
yeah and if when you're crossing the borders just like if you can make it seem as normal as possible like as like mm -hmm. normal human as possible as opposed to like i'm packing up my life and doing this sort of like slightly strange yeah. thing. just saying we're just like you know yeah 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 um yeah so then that's like so if you're talking about bali it's like buy a flight buy a one-way flight um or a return flight you know depends um uh, do you want to talk about the U.S. or Bali or no? Um, the U.S. I'm pretty familiar just from having spent yeah a good amount of time there. So Bali would be great. Okay. Um, so Bali. So my my knowledge on this, I haven't done research on it in. I don't know, four years since I was there, but when I was there four years ago, the way it worked is that anybody can come in for a month and on a tourist visa, and it's relatively easy to find out what the current rules are by googling like visa Bali or like Bali tourist visa entrance, okay. uh, Bali tourist visa two month, visa Bali tourist visa six month. Um, when I was there, it was a, you could get a one month visa, no problem when you showed up. You could get extend that one month visa for a fee through any number of services. Like it was a whole, a whole business model for individuals in Bali to extend people's visas. It was really easy to find, you just ask around somebody that's there. Um, and then you would, um, so if you know you're going to stay for six months, then that's different. That's like, okay, so you know you're going to come in. And I mean, for me, Bali is like somewhere between $500 and $1,500 to get there. For me, it's like, stay for a while. It's beautiful. Like, yeah, exactly. It, right. It is amazing. Um, know that it's going to be stinking hot. Like when you're, when you're traveling to any uh, tropical country, you need like one sweater, no jacket. If you need another jacket, you can buy it there. Like it's fine. Um, <laughs> I used to make that mistake. I remember I brought my hat. I brought it like winter hat because I was leaving and it Did was like, just like, no, I really don't need this. It's like, <laughs> back, but I'm not carrying it around anymore. Um, <laughs> We'll get into packing for sure. Can you make a note to like remind me to check in around packing? Okay. Um, so yeah, so Bali. So if you know you're going to do a six month visa, when I was there, it was uh, again. There's like a tourist visa extension. It's a, like you can find laundromats, you can find restaurants, you can find tourist visa extension places. Um, cool. Okay. It, it was like a seventy five dollars per person per month to extend your visa. So it was like, you know, I mean, for two or three, and that includes kids. So it's like for three people, it starts to add up a little bit, depending on your budget. Um, that fee might've changed. And there was a lot of like, this is variable and it's constantly changing and it might go up and it might go down and it might disappear. So there was a lot of like renting a longer term apartment. You can find really great deals on like year long rentals, like $300 a month kind of wow, good deals wow. on like two or three bedroom places, but you might not be able to stay for a whole year. Right. 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 Um, if you do want to, if you did want to stay for a whole year, then there's like the business visa. That's a whole other thing or getting sponsored by, I don't think I would want to, I think six yeah. months would be the max. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's once you get past six months, it gets hectic. Um, visa runs in general are hectic. The visa run is just when you like leave the country to renew your visa. Um, but th they've gotten pretty smart about that in some countries. Like, uh, you can Google again, like Google's a great resource for all of this, but if you don't yeah. know what you're looking for, it's hard to find exactly yeah you can google like what are the v digital nomad visa asia okay okay That's the search um nomad list is a really great resource for like cost okay. of living in different cities cool um, wi-fi safety uh, air pollution they don't talk about like veganism and food uh food stuff in the same way that we might want them to but a lot of the like sort of basic travel things they cover really really well okay um great yeah, and then in terms of finding housing, so uh, what I like to do is I'll usually rent an Airbnb for a week to two weeks. If it's a jet lag kind of situation, I would say two weeks to give yourself time to not be looking for a house that first week while you're jet lag, but you will be going to Bali. You'll be waking up at like 3 a.m. being like, why am I wide awake? And you're like, oh, because it's right, like, right, right. Um, And especially babies, like when I traveled on my own, I, I had no problem. I just like forced myself to stay awake and then like, but with her little kid, days, yeah. but like Alex was up at like 3 a.m. every day, wide awake, and I was like, "Shit, I have to be a human being and nice at 3 a.m." Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so that's <laughs> like a real thing. But yeah, renting an Airbnb um, for okay, two, that's this is really good stuff. Like I would not know, you know. 
Thank yeah. you. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm listening. Yeah. So rent yourself an Airbnb for two weeks and then you can either, there's sort of one of two ways. You can either wander around, go to the convenience stores, go to the grocery stores, go to the little restaurants and ask the people who run and work there. Hey, do you know anybody who's renting a cheap apartment that looks like X, Y, Z? Two bedrooms, has, uh, you know, a fan, you want a fan in Bali, you let me need fans. And if there's air con, great, but minimum you need a fan because it's so stinking hot. Um, any tropical country, just like you need a fan. You can buy okay. one if you need, but like, um, and then um, you just ask around. And, and what I've okay. found is that usually you get taken, you need a little bit of, uh, depending on how touristy the place is, like you might need a little bit of the language, you might not. They might find somebody who speaks English and then bring the, you know, here comes grandma and here comes, comes the like niece who speak, who they both, one speaks English and one has the apartment and they'll take you to go see either a really divey place or a really beautiful place, sort of depends. And it's totally fine to say no. Um, yeah. That's, that's sort of like the, that's the like boots on the pavement kind of way. Um, but more and more what's also happening is there are Facebook groups where people are posting their like sort of high, like it, let's say you can find like the cheapest of the cheap places through the grandma method, but the Facebook method will get you sometimes really few places, sometimes really nice places, but with less like legwork. Um, so then you yeah. can rearrange stuff ahead of time. Um, yes. I sublet some lady's apartment for two months for $250 a month. Um, the, when I first arrived in Bali and I yeah. out after the first month, cause I was like, actually, this is like, I, I want a $500 a month apartment, not a $150 a month apartment. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was upgrade. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's go get something a little nicer. Um, but in Bali, like when I was there at least like $500 will get you like a really nice two bedroom place with a kitchen, maybe, maybe once a week or twice a week cleaning service. Um, yeah. That kind of thing. Wow, so, great. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, but that really depends on the city and you can check out Nomad List has really great um, sort of like estimates for what the prices is for like hotels, Airbnb, local stays, what it costs locals to live there. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so for cities in Bali, yeah. we would want to go definitely somewhere that we can swim in the ocean. Yeah. Um, so places you, I mean, you want to go to Ubud, which is in the mountains. Um, because okay. it's like the hub of all the detox and all the yoga and all the meditation, like that's, that's where it's happening. Okay. Okay. Um, it's not on the beach. It's about an hour and a half hour, to okay. an hour and a half from the beach on a motorbike. Um, you will want to rent a motorbike and you will want to learn how to do that. And when you do that, you will want to make sure that when you're training yourself to ride a motorbike, that you put your thumbs on the back side of the brake at all times. There's sort of like a handle and then the brake is behind like instead of on, on a bicycle it's at the front on the motorbike it's at the back and if you, okay on back side of brake okay yeah because in a panic moment you're gonna go like this <sighs> right in a panic you're gonna go <sighs> which means that you're braking instead of not having your thumbs on the back side of the brake and having it just on the handle in which case you're panicking and accelerating uh, how can i ride on a motorbike with a two-year-old uh you bring an ergo and you strap them to you okay I got it. Alex was older. He was like four or five, something like okay, that. Okay, good. So you so can would like just, strap him. Yeah, I would just sit him in front of me and, and he was old enough that I'd be like, we're on the motorbike now. You have to sit still. And we like practiced that a little bit. But there were also yeah. days where like, I just wanted to go on a joy ride and I'd put him on back and I'd like tie him in with a sari. I'd just like tie him in and he'd fall asleep on my back while we were. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but definitely bring a baby. Oh my career. God. Like, okay, you know, baby carrier. Yeah, like uh, Bali, like in most of like Latin America, Asia, like you do, you probably don't want to bring a stroller unless it's like, unless you know you're going yeah. to city, you know you're going to a single place um, because the, like the sidewalks are just not the same caliber. Like you're friendly, yeah. Going up and over the like, yeah. Like the sidewalks are like, I'm doing it with my arms. Like the sidewalks are literally like this, like to find a place. Okay. But, yeah, just baby. I, he's not a stroller guy anyway, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Holy moly. Is there is a really cool city on the ocean that, um, would be like, that is kind of a hub of this stuff or is it just Ubud? Uh, I would say Ubud's probably like, Ubud's definitely the biggest, um, Changu I've heard good things about. I didn't spend a ton of time there, but there is like, there was ecstatic dance showing up there. Um, there is, 
uh, there's a bunch of co-working spaces, so you'll find other like sort of long-term traveling people there. Um, Ahmed, I'd heard things about, and then oh, I can't remember the name. There's like a little island off the coast. Okay, and I'll do my research too. Yeah, there's like a little Based island. On where, where in most of Bali, drugs are like highly illegal, like end up in jail for the rest of your life slash. Yeah, um, like, yeah, yeah, that's not an issue. Yeah. But this one island is like, everything's fine there. I can't remember what it is. Oh, interesting. Called. That's okay, I'll do my research. Um, yeah. Okay, like, and I mean, what's the most that a person like, that the three of us would need to, to have financially per month to survive well there? The most like a two two thousand uh well no i mean the most is like you could spend like fifty thousand dollars a month to live in bali if you want right but like so reasonably much. um uh for for like i what i found is that nomading costs about the same as living in a city only okay. only you spend your money on flights and uh cool experiences instead of so much on rent Right, so it's it's just sort of like the proportion morphs a little bit. You're gonna spend a thousand. So it's like a four k a month thing, about. Yeah, it, I mean, it, I mean, we'd be comfortable with four k a month. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I lived there on, I think I lived on like a thousand five hundred for Alex and I, something like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, That's I can awesome. look up the numbers, but. Um, okay, so we would definitely be comfortable for for three of us, two adults and one ch child. Four k a month would be like we're good. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. I mean, living kind of right? living average. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can eat at like, you can eat at places where it's $20 a plate or you can eat at places where it's 50 cents a plate. So if your budget's an issue, like you choose the 50 cents a plate or you cook for yourself. Um, definitely finding fresh fruit was really easy. Finding fresh vegetables and fresh greens was like more challenging, but like Ubud has amazing organic natural like like okay. the whole tourism industry is built around like you and me like the whole okay like if you imagine, yeah like uh uh kuta is another town that you would probably don't want to go to which is a tourism industry built around like the drunk australian no offense to any drunk australians who watch this later. yeah but um <laughs> the boots tourism industry is built around like conscious new age women. okay that's where we want to go yeah, yeah. Um, Woo, okay, anything that needs to come up with regards to traveling with a two-year-old? <laughs> uh, give yourself an extra, like, travel days are travel days. All you need of course. to do is travel. That's it. Right. Don't book anything else. Don't book any work calls. Don't do any, like, give yourself an extra hour to two hours on anything so that you don't need to be like, come on, let's go, we gotta go. Um, yep. Traveling with a two-year-old. Uh, like well, he'll a, be three by then, yeah, a new by the time toy, we go there. A new toy at the airport works wonders, like something brand new. It's just yep. like, oh, you know, you get through all the hustle and bustle of all the lineups, and then you get to, like, the waiting part before you get on the airplane. It's just like, here, have this. Um, works wonders. Yep. Bringing, like, a favorite toy, a little, like, a book to do something with, um, something that, cool. you know, entertainment. Um, I always, always, always bring my own snacks on the airplane. Like, I'm sure, well, you being breatharian is now said snacks is a little different. Yeah, but. I'm, I'm the breatharian, but I've got a husband and a child to feed, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're not breatharian, so I still need to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, like, I always bring snacks. Um, hummus does not fly through airport security. I learned that. Behind. Anything liquidy like that, hey? Anything liquidy, like applesauce, even if it's prepackaged in the thing, like, that doesn't work. But apples, bananas, nuts, seeds, vegetables, Perfect. whole foods, like, those are fine. They'll go through the x-ray machine not the best but like better than the airport. whatever you know just bless yeah. it um it's travel right like yeah. sacrifices yeah and it's so like yeah um water yeah we're uh, so I, picky about our water yeah i mean i just bring water bottles with and then fill them up on the other side and then drink conventional water you can get like filtered reverse osmosis water in 90 percent of the countries most of the um kind of, like the tropical countries have 
they do do bottled water anyways because the city water is like non-potable so that's a thing um if you're serious serious about it the kangen water peeps do like a travel sized one um it's about two grand us i think so it's like pricey um but definitely if you're interested in that or if anybody else is interested in that like let me know um that's something that i might be bring that i'll probably be bringing online in the next month or two um yeah cool. so that can be plugged into any any tap that you have along the way um there are also uh like bottles that you can buy that have filters built into them so you might want to look into that that'd be like again a google search like uh best travel water bottle for yeah multiple countries um there's quite a few that have like carbon filter type things built into them so then you would put filtered water in it and then drink through it uh, like, yeah life straw is the name of one company so yeah i'll definitely do my research yeah um yeah, you picky about water for sure. Uh, homeopathics, <laughs> are impossible. Water. homeopathics and flower essences are impossible to get in any other country. Um, okay. Shipping those kind of things, bring an entire supply of supplements. Like, bring a, if you're doing supplements, like, bring them. Bring a six month supply, bring however long you think you're going to be gone for. Like, just. Okay. Bring them. Um, I, I filled like half of my suitcase for this trip with like vitamins and supplements. Okay. Good to know. Um, they have Amazon here in Mexico, but like, I can't, I haven't been able to use my Canadian cards to purchase off Mexican Amazon to ship to a location. Ah. Right? So like, you okay. get it, but you need to have a Mexican friend who's willing to do that. And I haven't found that. Right. Yet. Okay. Um, I got it. And you have to be somewhere long enough. Like sometimes you'll stay for a couple of months, but if you're, if you're moving around it's like okay so we're gonna buy this and we're gonna ship it to you know the city for, like two weeks from now so that we know by the time we get there it'll be there and then like are they gonna hold it long? like it can be it can be challenging and sometimes you miss things and you're like shit that was three hundred dollars worth of supplements that just didn't ever get right to, that kind of right. thing so mm -hmm. um same with essential oils essential oils are a little bit easier to find obviously don't bring any of the cannibals like canedibles from canada but uh cbd is now legal in mexico so we found it here um oh, cool. ubud is better about like superfood deliciousness stuff than any other place you're ever going to travel to um and wow. and most major cities will have some sort of like like it's not just yeah. americans who are into health food so we'll yeah 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 something but you'll find something yeah but if you're like me and you prefer small towns, then that's like, okay, I got to go, you know, maybe four hours to the big city in order to get that kind of stuff. Um, we did a, a trip like that not too long ago. It's like, okay, we'll go resupply with all the, all the Moringas and the Ashwagandhas and the Maccas and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And then uh, kefir, that's another thing um, that I've been doing on the road. So I brought dehydrated kefir with me okay and then have been like actively brewing kefir here so that i can continue doing my probiotics um good for you, you. yeah that's a great idea like sea salt with and do your own krauts or fermented vegetables right like so that the probiotics are still going because those are hard to find but easy to make okay um, yep if that's something your family's into yeah um, what else oh beautiful sprouts. we've been doing sprouts as well so like actively like i've got sprouts um and really great for that on like the travel spectrum is you just use a cup or a mug from wherever you're at and i have those uh like mesh fruit bags they're like yep. reusable fruit bags you get you get for the grocery store um i just put my whole cup inside of there so that it's like fruit fly proof and then tie it up really yep. good and then do my rinsing like i take it out to rinse it and put it back yep. in but um yeah that's that's I, I didn't think i'd be able to do sprouts on the road but i totally can so then you could bring you're not supposed to bring seeds across the border but you can just <laughs> check um or you can just get whatever you can whatever you can find here yeah yeah wow okay this is really good stuff um i brought my blender if you like smoothies you or did fish. yeah i brought yeah. like i brought a magic bullet um that's such a good idea we have one we have yeah. one so bring your blender yeah and i would say like you could bring one or two cups and then that cup becomes like breakfast dish slash oh hey we need a water bottle or whatever um yeah i wasn't sure if it was a good idea uh you do need to check your wattages i think bali's the same as us but europe is different you just need to double check that but that those are like 40 dollars or something so if you needed to get one in europe like you could bring it yeah um, um, I also had a, I, ha I have a portable water. Let me just grab it. I'll show you. I have a portable water boiler because I love tea and like 
when you're in like other people's houses, they don't necessarily have tea. Um, hey, check this out. This is my kettle. Oh my goodness, that's cute. That's such a cute little kettle, and you just plug it in. Yeah, and it squishes. Oh, beautiful. When I put it in my suitcase, okay. it squishes up. It's great. Wow. Yeah, Neat. so that's okay. That it means I can do tea in my room every morning. We were staying here and the hot, the hot water wasn't working in the water, water cooler thing. And then I had to ask somebody to boil me water so I could make tea. And then they weren't there and the kitchen was locked. And I was just like, I gotta solve this. I need my tea. Tea's not a thing for us. So yeah. Smoothies though. Yeah. Yeah. Or coffee. I will probably like be doing at some point like for myself like for staff smoothies for george smoothies and then i want to do like a smoothie a week i think nice. i still want to enjoy food you know yeah food's good <laughs> um but air is better <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Thomas, but our air is so so right ton is better yeah. <laughs> the, i said air for just a comedic effect <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. um okay so wow this is really good stuff okay it almost made them like oh my goodness i don't even know if i want to go to bali it seems like it's just such an ordeal but it would be the worth it right it's totally worth it. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, right now you have your comfort zone. It's the thing that That's you it. all the time, right? And once you, once you change what your comfort zone looks like or, or push out of it a little bit, you're just like, oh, this is really cool. Like it's the leap, okay. the challenging part. And then once you're there, you're like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's totally days where you're like, this is overwhelming. I don't know what to do. I don't know how right. to handle this, but it's like, right. You got yourself, like, you can always fly home if you need to. Yep. You've moved to another country. You've lived in the U.S. for, like, ages. It's, like, not any different than that, only okay. you don't know when you're leaving or you don't know when you're coming back. Or you do have, like, you know, I know I need to leave Mexico by March, but I don't have to figure right. out where I'm going until February 15th because right. okay. it's totally easy to buy an air, like, how long does it take to buy an air uh, plane ticket? Right. It's about 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right? So, right. <laughs> So 40 <laughs> minutes before March 28th, I need to have figured out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe three days, right? But like, it could be three days before my visa, and I still don't know where I'm going, and I'm okay right. with that. And a huge part of that is just like having what uh, this term got given to me a couple of days ago is like psychological safety. So it's like, yep. No matter what happens, no matter if I'm outside of my comfort zone, I know I can solve my problems. I know I can. Good for you. That's amazing. I know yeah. I can ask Google if other people have had these problems and more and more often they have. I mean, I yep. read an article today about how to make tofu while you live in an RV. Oh, wow. That was an article about it. Like, hey, we're making our yeah. own tofu from organic uh, soybeans from scratch in, in the RV. Here's, you know, six links to Amazon products you might want. And here's four different. Wow. And like, so I met another lady who was making kefir in her RV. I was like, oh, I'm making kefir in a van. How cool is that? You know? Like, That's <laughs> amazing. I love that. Okay. So, oh. no, this is really great. And this is a good transmission even because you're, you're not just giving information, you're like transmitting the experience, the, the essence of the experience that you have. Well, and I like can receive that, yeah. And, and the essence of it is like, you're fully in control of your own life. You get to choose where you wanna spend your money, how you wanna spend your money, where you wanna spend your time, how, what you want your life to look like. And instead of it being the same all the time and being like, okay, well, this is what I'm doing and maybe it's not ideal, so I'll just deal with it indefinitely. It's like, okay, well, maybe this isn't ideal and I'll just deal with it for the next three weeks, for the next two months, for the next whatever, like it, it, the yeah. mindset has this, like, it's a shorter, it's like a shorter term, like I'll deal with it. Um, and it, right. it, it just open, opens things up. Um, and I find that you don't, if you really don't want to deal with it, you just won't create that kind of situation again. Right. Where right. City that makes sense. Or in that sort of like repeti repetitive, like work mindset or whatever, like I call it city mind. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, my, I'm so over this I'm yeah. over this my hour-long commute isn't ideal but I don't have another choice and it's like you literally have the entire world to choose from um right uh because I did research on it today I'm gonna just like touch in on like healthcare and insurance and um, yes please I would love stuff. to hear about that literally did research on this today because I realized it was only gonna be in Canada for one month this year and I was like usually I go back for six so <laughs> what does life look like when I'm only <laughs> I'm only in uh right 
I'm only in Canada for a month. Um, right. So uh, mo uh, most Canadian provinces have healthcare um, of some form or another, right? We have Canadian healthcare, it's great. That healthcare is the basis of uh, travel insurance. I personally have traveled for eight years without any travel insurance whatsoever. And the worst thing that's happened to us is we had some skin rashes. We got staphylococcus, which I treated homeopathically. And then um, I did get like a pres like over the counter prescription um, anti, like a, pe a like penicillin a cream or something like that. Yeah. Um, to, to like clear it the rest of the way up because I spent a week treating it or two weeks treating it. And I was like, this is getting worse. I should probably, you know, do something. Yeah, totally. I, I, I agree. That total, was a like, good $20 or something for that particular thing. Um, I, we've had some ear infections. We've had some mostly skin rashes, mosquito bites. I got dengue. I slept it like I slept it for a week and, and got help, oh. um, help with food and stuff. Um, so I haven't had anything that really requires, and I would recommend like if anybody's going on that kind of adventure, like don't make that decision if you feel super anxious about traveling without travel insurance, right? Okay. If it fills you with dread, then do something like that. There's really great companies like uh, World Nomads and Safety Wing, um, which offer travel insurance. Safety Wing is built by Digital Nomads for Digital Nomads, it's $37. I think US, but still 37 US dollars a month for travel anywhere in the world for like basic stuff. And it includes one child per adult thing. Um, so that's like $78 for you guys to just have yeah. to, to know that you've got it, you know, um, yeah. for a first trip, that's like I think that's good psychologically, but mm -hmm. you need to know that that travel insurance is based on you having Canadian travel insurance, which is based on being back in Canada for a minimum of one day more than six months every year. Okay. Yeah. No. Thanks. Um, I think we're permanent. Really. I think we're permanently going to relocate. Which. Great. I hope we can line up our travels. Well, we're not very nomadic. That's the thing. Um, this is really good because like, you're really educating people who are nomadic. We're not necessarily nomadic. This would be like we're just going to travel for like a year and maybe, and then we're going to, we're ready to settle down. <laughs> you know us. We're yeah. pretty like, let's settle down. Yeah. Um, so maybe you're this is really good. Looking for a new place. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. Uh, so yeah, travel insurance is definitely an option. Okay. Um, and then to have it reinstated in Canada, like say you travel for like eight months, you have to spend at least three months in Canada before it like okay. back in again. If you're okay. a citizen, if you're a permanent resident, it's like a whole other ball game. But if you were like born and raised in Canada and Canadian citizenship, Canadian passport, then like it's really not a big deal to have left for a long period of time and then come back. Um, right. Make sure all your online banking um, goes through. Set up. Get, like you set up all your online banking beforehand. Make sure you travel with well, oh, like I, I have cut. Oh, You're still here? Yeah, I'm still here. I can see you. Are you here? Yes, I can hear you. I, you cut off. At, make sure all your online bank, banking is. Oh, just make sure it's set up. Make sure that you're not getting, you know, set up. statements to anywhere. I would recommend having two different banks and two different bank cards minimum that you travel with. Um, okay. Because it's possible one of them will get locked and you can't do anything about that for three months it's, or until you come back. Um, one trip I left with three different banks, three different cards. And by the time I came back, all of them had had fraud charges on them. And I was in my last month of travel, I had to find another Canadian that I could e-transfer money to. And he took money out of his account for me. I was like, hey, are you Canadian? I need to e-transfer somebody money. And then you can, I had e-transfer a total stranger like $400 and be like, can you please take this out for me so that I have cash to be able to handle my life in Thailand? You know, like right. it's, it's, it's less of a big deal if you're traveling with another person, obviously, because you've got like duplication across two people, but most people don't think about, you know, if, if in Canada, if your bank card stops working, which it's unlikely to do because you're not putting it in like chip readers that might have um, like fraudulent chip readers that just like lock your card after you've used them, which is really quite common in Bali. Um, prepaid visa cards also like a pretty good way to go because then you, you can just reload them and if they get cut off, it's not like your main like account access card. Um, 
Uh, also, uh, Coho is a really great option for banking. Um, K O H O, I think .ca is their website. Um, they don't have a physical bank location. They're based in Canada, but they don't have a physical bank location. Can I pause you for a second? Do it. I'm just Sorry. Well, you you can just. No can I can I have one more minute? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Oh, so yeah. exciting. What is that on? Bank, card? bank cards. Banking. Coho.ca. Coho. Yeah. So Coho doesn't have any physical um, locations. So that means okay. that they don't charge you ATM fees uh, at other banks, which is great when you're traveling because normally you go, well, in Canada in general, most people don't operate on cash, but the, most of the tropical countries have operate on cash. Like you can't. You need cash. Like you need cash. You don't so need. So how do you get cash? ATMs that are everywhere. Okay. You just yeah. get cash from an ATM in, in another country. Yeah. And you take. It out doesn't matter. You take out somewhere between 200 to 800 dollars at a time depending on how much money you spend and what the atm limit is and what your card limit is some of the banks you have to let them know that you're traveling otherwise they lock their cards when they find out you're in a foreign country and then it takes you maybe 24 hours to a week to resolve that Ugh. which is really stressful um in general i don't get um I don't get cash out before I leave. I don't go to a bank and exchange cash. I just show up at the airport. I find the ATM closest to the airport. Maybe I pay the taxi driver that I'm uh, taking to wherever I'm going next in US. Like I like to, I like to have at least uh, like a hundred to five hundred dollars US that I just travel with because people will take US dollars anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, like ninety percent of the world, Canadian dollars not so much, but like a, a chunk of US cash. My passport wallet is like a standard. Um, awesome. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, You're full of good tips. <laughs> You're full of great tips. Uh, I've been for like almost 10 years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just get cash out at the ATMs. And then uh, Dan and I invested in like a passport travel uh, like lockbox. It's about this big that we just oh, like, cool. uh, it's got like a little cable lock and we just lock it to the bed. So then the passports and the extra, extra cash go in there. Um, so Good idea. Attached to something as opposed to like sitting in a drawer where, you know. Cause What's the point of that? <laughs> Somebody will just. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I have the only theft that I've experienced while I was traveling was questionable people I shouldn't have invited into my house. Mm -hmm. So I haven't experienced theft from locals, for example, but I have heard stories of it happening and um, it's a good idea to lock up your cash, you know, yeah. if, not, if you've got totally. it like if you've got cash that's equivalent to like one to seven months of somebody's yearly income in right. your room and the cleaning lady is cleaning like i've had really really good luck with all of my cleaning ladies but like to just leave it out you know is a thing that yeah. you don't want to do and everybody has their own opinions but like i'm in favor of non-paranoid travel like if you're going to travel yeah. and you're out about being traveling like maybe it's not the lifestyle for you just let it go you know um, so what um obviously like are you tipping p lots of people as you go um sometimes like cleaning lady you know like what's standard country to country um it's different yeah i would just look it up like before we go to a new country okay. you google like digital nomad guide for x country or like travel guide or do i tip okay in honduras or do i tip in bali or or you can ask um, taxi drivers usually give really good advice. People in other countries always appreciate it when you tip, even if it's not normal. Like, right, of course. It, you know, $4 goes a long way when you're a local. You know, yeah. so I like to be generous with that. Um, yeah. But also, um, the relationships are often transactional and sort of passing through. So if you don't in a place or another place, it's not the end of the world. Right, right. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm yeah cash taking out all your cash at once i don't know what else on that just like make sure you have extra cards there's nothing worse than Kids. being in a foreign i already said that but there's nothing worse than being in a foreign country and having all of your cards locked it's it's yeah it's horrific um yeah and then getting one that has like low or minimal fees for your transactions um is I think important because you can, so, let, so let's say, I'm, I just wanna give an example. So let's say you're taking out $400 Canadian at a local ATM. That's, you know, two weeks of cash 
three weeks of cash, something like that for a local economy. Um, and you take it out. So it's $400 that you're taking out of your account. The ATM, because you're, you've got a foreign card, is charging you $4 and your bank is charging you $5. Okay. For the, the privilege of taking money out outside of your country. So you, you just spent, okay. you know, $409 to take out your $400. Whereas if you just get right. a card that you can use that doesn't charge you those fees, you just saved yourself $9 on every transaction. Let's say you right. don't plan your transaction and your cash taking out very well, and you end up doing that seven times a month. It's like seven right. It can dollars. add up. It adds up, especially if, especially if you're not thinking about it and you don't know it ahead of time. And it's like, we want to, like, we want to give that $9 to the person we're tipping, not to the bank. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then um, maybe we can go to packing unless you had any other. No, I'm good. I'm like, you're answering everything. So packing. Sure. So, um, I like to underpack instead of overpack. Everybody overpacks their first trip. I overpacked my first trip. You will hate packing and unpacking those things over and over and over again. Um, you will learn, you will begin to resent the things you brought that you never use and you will learn how to like just let go of them and clear them out. Um, a lot of people take their stuff from their house and put it in a storage locker. Um, I'm in favor of, you know, putting it in somebody else's basement where you don't have to pay for it to be there. Um, and I'm in favor of purging before, you know, like if you know you're gonna, if you know you're going like long term traveling and you're not coming back, like I gave away my winter jacket to somebody who loved it and was super happy. And I gave my boots to her and I gave my, my uh, like uh, ski pants to her and my hats and my gloves. And like, I just, I, like, here, I don't need it, you know? And it's liberating to not connect to who you used to be, the fact that you needed to have that stuff. Um, by the yeah. time you come back, anything you've put in a storage locker, you will probably have forgotten it existed. Yeah. And you'll come back and you'll be like, wow, oh my God, I forgot. Wow, look, who, who was this person that had all of these things? Right, you know? right, right. Um, so it's like, you can, be, you can be ruthless about it. And I'd recommend making, you know, it's like all about making piles. So it's like things I definitely think I'm going to need, things I think I'm going to need, but I probably won't. Don't bring it anything that goes in that pile. If you really okay. need it, you can, you can buy it. You know, with the okay. of homeopathics, essential oils, alternative medicines, like those things are actually really challenging to get in foreign countries, but okay. like any of the clothing things, anything like that. Um, and then the pile of things that like, I probably don't need to keep it all, like just donate them. Somebody else will appreciate them. Throw a swap, have a going away party, be like, Hey guys, these are all of my things. Like I really don't yeah. need any more, like take whatever you want. And it gives people a nice memento of you, you know, you yeah. think about it. Um, in terms of packing a bag, I would recommend... 35 liters as a good size so like the size of your torso you can get backpacks that are up to 80 liters nobody wants to carry 80 to 80 liters of stuff like you will fill whatever bag you have you will right. fill it, whatever bag so keep it to a size that when you fill it with heavy stuff it's not going to break your back to be carrying that plus a toddler plus uh you know an extra a bag case up along the way plus a bag of food because i've literally right is not fun. Um, I, I did something like that just going to Windsor and I like severely overpacked my first time traveling with staff and it's just that was like one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I recommend either like, I can't believe I'm going to say this because I've traveled out of a backpack for years and I loved it, but I would recommend a suitcase with wheels. <laughs> Yeah, like, we're, we've up. got them. Um, unless you're doing like a major, like with children, you're probably not doing major overland trekking. You're not hiking anywhere to like camp somewhere right. else, right? Like you're going to yeah. be in a city, you're going to be in a town, you're going to be in a place where there's, yeah. like, you know, so there's not many situations where you can't just like pick that suitcase up and put it on a shoulder or like huff it behind your back kind of thing or just like carry it and be like man this is awkward I wish I had a backpack right now for the next 40 seconds but now I'm fine kind of thing yeah just be like wow I'm gonna get somebody else to help me I'm gonna get a taxi I'm gonna get a whatever right um yeah if there are really great suitcases that have like with standards I, I bought like a, a $70 three suitcase set from Walmart it's going to be trash by the end of this trip but like it totally functions you don't yep. $700 suitcase well um, we yeah okay you know you probably that's awesome some, yep. whatever you have works um uh I recommend stuff that opens like that you can flop all the way open because like reaching and digging into the, one of those like top loading <laughs> bags yeah no like, hectic and not fun um okay. 
Yeah. And I would say in terms of packing, like imagine packing for uh, like an overnight at your best friend's house. Pack that bag first. That's what you actually need. That's what you actually need okay. for your trip. And then fill your suitcase with all the other things that you were like, I think I'm, I think I probably will definitely need this, you know, and okay. include the blender and including the anything else that you use every day. Because really what you're doing is you're just taking your everyday life and you're moving it somewhere else. And right. You, you know, you're just, you're just taking your everyday life and you're moving it somewhere else. And if you're just going to the U S as your first trip, like you can totally um, just put that like you can put a bunch of the stuff you've got in glass jars right now. You can put them in bags. You can put them in, um, you know, you can put smaller, smaller amounts. Be like, okay, you know, estimated. I put this much into my body every day. That means, you know, I put one teaspoon in. So I'm going to need for the next six months, I'm going to need, you know, 30 days times six months, teaspoons of this. That's this much. Okay. I'm going to bring this yeah. much and you can, you can measure it out. It's fun. Um, knowing that you can probably get stuff that's maybe not as good quality, but still there anywhere else well the u.s is not US an issue the u.s is like way better than even canada yeah but yeah i like, imagine like bali or any other place like yeah no okay that's awesome yeah uh, Woo. yeah i mean i have a packing list that i made a couple years back i can send that to you uh, I ended up carrying backups of a lot of things. Like I have this one and then I have a backup of it. But when you're traveling with two people, it's just like the other person is your backup. You know, like my headphones right. break, like Dan's headphones, Dan's got another pair of noise canceling headphones. I love noise canceling headphones. I would highly recommend bringing them. Okay. Sometimes it's really loud in foreign countries. Like New Year's here was like a truck with two big, big ass, like, like the size of my body, like speakers parked like 40 feet from our house. Just like, and fireworks all night every 40 seconds i just put my headphones on and i played some nice isochronic tones and i was just like it's yeah. okay it's only one night it's fine like other countries yeah. are like, not louder than, than yeah. ours are and then like those little earplugs that go in your ears like those are great for if you don't bring headphones like at least two or three pairs of those for airplanes and okay. stuff. yeah um, also, airplanes are loud for kids, so like headphones for kids, because it's like the, the ambient noise is irritating. Um, I brought charcoal because it heals any, like activated charcoal, it will like handle any incongruous food that you guys might eat. Um, I brought a shit ton of vitamin C. I brought, um, I brought reishi because it's just kick ass. Uh, what else do I have? I brought Moringa because that'll like fill in so many of the nutritional things that might not happen. Um, Probably elderberry too. Yeah. You know, I've heard a bunch of people talk about that. I don't know it so well, but I know it's, a bunch of people it's amazing. It. Yeah. And then probably colloidal silver. What, I was thinking about that one the other day. I didn't bring it and it's not something I've used a ton, but um, that's like a multi-purpose. Yeah. And then like Arnica um, I have, peppermint lavender and oregano i would have brought tea tree but dan really doesn't like tea tree so i decided on oregano instead um yeah nice toothpastes are really hard to find i ended up bringing like three like how much how many how many months are you going for bring enough toothpaste for your whole trip it doesn't take up that much space nice shampoos can be hard to find too um so bring a full bottle you know but don't put it in your carry-on put it in your check because we'll take it otherwise um yeah what else i'm just so happy with my little kettle oh <laughs> and I have, kettle. A little, I have a little mug like i have a little tiny little like enamel mug that's like just my mug you know it's it's the little things that like stay the same you know i used to have prayer yeah. flags that i hung up in every place we went to we have like a whole altar set up so like uh we actually brought our singing bowls which is i won't cool do next time because they're really heavy we'll bring the tuning forks instead um, yep but like, you know, do, do make space. You know, when I said like pack, pack a day bag for your best friend's house and then fill the rest of it with like little things that you actually use every day that just make it feel like home because you're, yeah. you may or may not be in several locations, but even if you're in one location, it's just like something to be like, oh yeah, this is our space, no matter where we are. It's yeah. like, okay. So I've set up, you know, I, I've got a, a, a bag about this big of just like little rocks and gems and little things I've 
Yeah, so yeah, definitely. And I can make an altar wherever I am and be like, this is my space now because I've set up my yeah. altar and um, like a like a handkerchief or a, or a cloth will go a long way too to like create a base layer for that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I just want to let you know, I think I have like, I have 8% left. So great. Yeah, and my brain is like, I don't know what else I would tell her. Okay, well, if anything else comes up, I was like, can I just um, pop you a question? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I, I'm going to send you an article that I read today that ha goes over like all of the Canadian travel logistics for longer term travel because it was really well okay. done. It covered all of the things, uh, like all of the more like legal logistical things, like the healthcare and the taxes and stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah perfect that would be really really helpful and beneficial yeah, yeah. okay wow <laughs> i've got a lot of work ahead of me you know mm. it, it's like it's just one thing at a time and my first trip like, at a time i didn't know any of it i just bought myself a plane ticket and was like i'm going and i bought my plane ticket with like a week's notice and just like chucked all of i was like hey this lady's a mom she's gonna want all my kid toys like everything else is going to my parents place let's pack my bag yeah. oh i don't have a bag let's get a bag you know and just right. go. and then it's like just trust yourself to be able to figure out whatever it is that you need to figure out along the way okay. right it's like you'll be able to figure it out every like you'll be surprised every country in the world has commercialism so of course right yeah to find most of the things you need getting a taxi in a foreign country is maybe slightly more difficult than getting a taxi in your home country but uber works in most major cities it's like you can utilize that i i i got ubers in morocco i got ubers well you can't do it in ubud because they there's a thing there but um you know, and any place you've been, somebody else has been there. So you can always Google like traveling to X, Y, Z with a family um, guide, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I don't know if you're, you're, you're guys a little too young to be like world schooling, but like we are world schoolers is a great Facebook group that has, um, cool. that has, you know, thousands of families that are doing the same kind of thing and you can search for somebody's asked your question before or you can ask a question and they'll answer it like the internet has a plethora of of um, options i remember my first mexico trip I, I met a really cute mexican guy in my first two weeks and i was like what's it like to date a mexican dude dear google what's right. it like to date a mexican dude <laughs> and there were thousands of women saying please what? don't do it you know like <laughs> And I was like, okay, mental note, won't. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure some people have happy, you know, uh, bi -cultural. Mexican relationships, right. But. but for me, it was like, I needed to know whether I should, you know, go have an affair with this guy and fall in love with him. And I found my answer. You know, I, I looked for proof for what I wanted. And sometimes it's about knowing, like, what to search for. Um, right. You know, like if today when I was looking for information about like long term travel for Canadians, I found a whole bunch of information for Americans. I found a whole bunch of information from the Canada government site. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I want somebody who's actually traveling. Right, so right. Like, mm -hmm. So then that's a bit of a different search. And you got to look around a little bit, but you have to know that like the information that you need is out there. And so you can yep. find what you need and then you can figure out whatever you need to, to figure out. You can always stay somewhere a little bit longer, even if it's not ideal just to like be like oh okay we're just gonna rest for a bit right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm excited that you're okay. gonna go traveling like <laughs> it's so time like we waited and we waited until you know we got the message and like honestly like even i can tell like even jord's dying he's dying you know mm -hmm. because of the lifestyle yeah it's just sucking the life out of them. I'm like, it's just time. I just feel it and all the confirmations coming in and we need, we need a new life yeah. and it's not here. So, yeah. so it, it was all triggered like with me doing my integration, breath air and integration, because you can't do that and stay the same. Yeah. You know, I'm profoundly changing and I can tell like my life is literally just going to the the highest level that it can possibly go yeah. because i'm going to the highest level i can possibly go right now yeah. right so 
Yeah, and and what a blessing to know that like you and Jordan are together on that journey, no matter what. Like, that yeah. Because sometimes when you do go, I'm gonna radically change my life. I'm gonna radically improve my life. Like you do, I, I call it like a friendectomy. Like you lose people sometimes. Oh, like, I can already see that happening. You know, yeah. like uh, one of my really good it's friends. It's already happened. Yeah. One of my really good friends in Calgary, like moved houses, got kicked out of her house, and like didn't even let me know while we were traveling because like we're just not in contact like that anymore. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, like that. That's just part of it. And um, but then there are people that you're like, hmm, like this one's worth hanging on to. This is a really good place to be. Um, you know, and it is important, even if those friendships aren't in person, to like continue yeah. the relationships with people who are really um, the same as you. And then you'll meet people all over. I say, you know, people, yeah. I've met people in every single country in the world who are conscious, wonderful human beings yeah. you know, who, who have that yeah. because it's not like that's isolated to the city that we're in or exactly right like the whole con the whole world is waking up and we can see each other like i would just go to the airport we're in the airport i'm like who should i talk to if maybe right. i'll talk to anybody but i just look for the shiniest person i'm like that guy that guy is super yeah. shiny. i'm gonna go talk to them and then you have this like profound conversation you're like oh, my soul is nourished maybe it's <laughs> right for, maybe it's just for this afternoon and maybe I'll never right. see them again, but, you know, beautiful, beautiful that I got to spend that moment with them and be, and nourish them and be nourished in the same way. And you're traveling with Jordan. So like, that's, it's that's all good. Right. I'm just like, I'm, I'm really craving for a soul family. And there are two people that I have met in my life who have been the epitome, like the epitome of my like soul, you know, there's, I mean, like you and you know, I've had some other people that are definitely, there's that beautiful connection, but these are like almost like as if they're extensions of me and other bodies and they live in Ecuador. And we always knew, like we've, we've known when we met in Mount Shasta, yeah. we, we knew that one day we would be together hmm. and we won't be in, together in the same location, but we'll be together in the same country. And Ecuador is not a big country. Apparently you can go eight hours to go, from the bottom to the top you know so i don't know it's just like oh and i actually wasn't sure and i just had a conversation before you with my aunt-in-law and her new beloved who's like is he's like an ascended master in physical form <laughs> and everything was just confirmed right before this mm -hmm. conversation Wonderful. everything was confirmed it was just like okay this is what we're doing goosebumps everywhere yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. So, and I have contacts in Ecuador to find out about moving there. So, yeah. I mean, it's all been divinely set up, but it would be nice to do some traveling beforehand before like resettling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. I, think I really appreciate you taking this time. Thank oh, you. Um, I, it's like super valuable for me too. I love like the knowledge jump and just like, there's so much I need to, you know, so much I know, like just right off the bat. So yeah, I, I have people ask me this question, but I don't always have the like heart connection where I want to spend an hour with them. Right, right. So you just, right. now you can just send it. Here you go. So, yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I hope that, you know, our travels do line up at some point. I Well, yeah. yeah, especially if, you know, not if, but when we do have, that location too right yeah. you are going to be welcome absolutely because that is going to be when we go there there will be a, we want to create a space where it's people can come family friends in and enjoy what we're creating there yeah I agree. You, especially you especially you yeah so <laughs> That's the thing I love about us. It, it doesn't matter. Like you just go, I didn't even know you're gone. And go like after, you know, like yeah. that the, it, it's like, there's not enough of a like attachment to be like, but there is, I mean, it doesn't matter every time we meet, it's like, I love you, mm -hmm. but then you can go, mm -hmm. you can go, go be free. And just next time we see you, be, I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, we are going to line up again, of course. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah, beautiful. Well, I better go. I've got 2%. So. Yeah, for sure. And if you have other questions along the way, just let me know, okay?
Thank you. And I'd love that, especially that Canadian um, checklist or whatever it was that would really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. Love. Um, if you ever want to catch up, just me and you like yeah. about our lives. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'll just see you when I see you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Yeah.